subscribe to bisbo and press the bell icon see boring news turn into enjoyable stories it was a chilly morning on december 3rd 2014 when four people walked into the registrar of companies office in himachal pradesh three of them were chinese nationals from shenzhen bin lu zhang ji and zhenshen ou and accompanying them was the mysterious new delhi based chartered accountant nitin garg We want to register our company Grand Prospect International Communications Private Limited. Nature of business distribution of Vivo in the Apons in India said Bindu. Are jara sab log ke liye chai la China se aaya. Company address Solan Himachal Pradesh. They repeated this process setting up 22 such companies under different names across the length and breadth of India. Ever since their entry 8 to 10 years ago Chinese smartphone companies have cornered 61% of the Indian market. But something doesn't seem quite right. Despite Vivo India having sales of over 15 billion dollars, 125,000 crore during this period, it has never declared a profit. Sensing something amiss, in September 2019, the ROC sent a notice to Binlo's Shimla-based company for not filing any financial reports in the last 2 years. Surprisingly, the notice was returned. She wrote a bonnet. Returned the sender. That address unknown. As the address mentioned in the records was found to be incorrect. In 2019, when the Ministry of Corporate Affairs dug further, it found that the given address was actually a government building. An alternate address that the company had provided these are staff quarters for senior bureaucrats. What bin low bin low you are asking? Finally in December 2021 the Ministry of Corporate Affairs woke up and filed an FIR in Delhi's Kalkaji police station but by the time the enforcement directorate stepped in Bin Lu had already left the country the moment Bin Lu's two associates Zheng Ji and Zheng Shen Ao received news of the FIR they too fled to Nepal to ED's surprise they found that Bin Lu was actually a former president of Vivo China who apparently came to India in the words of ED and we quote to spread financial terrorism Bindu set up 22 shell companies with fake addresses and no staff but with enough documentation to open bank accounts that were used to illegally siphon off half of Vivo India sales of 125000 odd crore over the last 8 years to the parent company Vivo China allegedly so as not to pay any tax in India basically they made money from Indians but avoided paying their dues to the government and mind you this is the same company that sponsored the IPL in 2017 for 5 years for a whopping 2199 crore <laughs> and ironically under the tag line love india love vivo however they were forced to withdraw as sponsors midway after indian sentiment turned against china in 2020 post the galwan incident realizing the scale of the scam the ed raided 44 of vivo india's offices freezing 465 crore sitting in bank accounts including fixed deposits worth 66 crore stopping the operations of vivo india making them approach the court for relief how will we run our business without bank accounts later on the delhi high court permitted vivo india to operate its bank accounts provided you furnish guarantees worth 950 crore which they did The decision allowed them to continue operating their 33 million unit capacity factory and ensure supply to their 70,000 retail outlets across the country. In its affidavit to the Delhi High Court, Vivo India refuted the grave charges of money laundering and financial terrorism, claiming the remittances to China are towards legitimate procurement of materials and services. This is not Vivo India's first brush with the law. In June 2020, Sub Inspector Asha Ram walked into a local phone shop in Meerut. Is my phone repaired? Two thousand six hundred five rupees will be paid. But when he tried to activate it, it continued to give an error. On checking further, he saw that the IMEI number printed on the box of his phone was different from the one on the device. A five-month-long investigation by the cyber branch found that more than thirteen thousand five hundred Vivo phones had the same IMEI number. If multiple phones have the same IMEI number, police will find it impossible to track criminals or solve crimes. which is why in 2017 the telecom regulatory authority of india try made it compulsory for every smartphone to have a unique imei number call it coincidence of fate vivo india's sister company oppo india part of the chinese bkk group 
simultaneously found itself under the radar of Indian tax authorities for tax evasion. Unbelievably, just like Vivo, Oppo too never made a profit in India with its net losses widening year on year despite selling phones worth 38,000 crore in FY1920. Here, it was the Directorate of Revenue Intelligence who found that they had evaded customs duty worth 4,389 crore by wrongfully using duty exemptions, misdeclaring imported items and failing to include royalty and license fees in their value of imported parts. Like Vivo and Oppo, yet another Chinese mobile company Xiaomi India was according to the DRI also siphoning off its India operations money to China in the name of royalty and license fees. However, unlike the others, Xiaomi India was at least posting profits and paying taxes. They alleged that ED officials in the course of their investigations threatened physical violence against their executives, a charge ED has denied as baseless. The Chinese embassy in India, however, was livid. Frequent investigations by the Indian side into Chinese enterprises are disrupting their business operations. Yet another Chinese executive was stopped at New Delhi airport on May 1st this year and not allowed to board his flight. Huawei India CEO Li Zhongkui was on his way to Bangkok to attend a meeting on behalf of his company and was stopped because of a lookout circular that was issued by the income tax department. It stated that Huawei India too passed over 19,000 crore in the previous six years to its nine group companies in the nature of royalty payments, technical services, purchase of traded goods, etc. And that its CEO Li deliberately tried to deny access to the books of accounts, emails or to key individuals of the company. Seeking to quash the lookout circular, Li memed a dialogue from the Bollywood movie My Name is Khan. I am a Chinese, not a terrorist. Maybe so, but why is it that only Chinese mobile companies seem to have trouble with the law? Huawei in particular has been unofficially barred from India and officially by many Western countries on fear of their passing on information to the Chinese Communist Party. And how is it that despite them having 60% of the market and $25 billion worth of sales in India, they still seem to be making losses? Following these developments, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has started inspecting books of accounts of more than 500 Chinese companies registered in India. In some cases, sending letters seeking details on directors, shareholders and beneficiaries of Chinese companies. The government also briefly considered banning the import of mobile phones below 12,000 rupees, but that is unlikely to happen. While these actions may be part of the government's blowback to the border situation, they may well be a kernel of truth in them as well. Bizbo's Limerick Why are all the companies selling Chinese mobile phones, evading taxes and looking for financial loopholes? Vivo and Xiaomi, Oppo and Huawei, all doing business but under China's control. You will also find these sources listed in our video description section.